and we are live for episode two of bike beers and bros this is my man luke big fix to god this week's episode is sponsored by club steve-o if you need to know where to go call steve-o yes mad props to steve-o for walking me in the building making me feel vip up here in the sky rise and it is april 6 2021 facts um, today, our beer of choice is going to be Buffalo Bayou, Cl- uh, what? Crush City, Crush City. All right, so here's to that. Bam. Where are we headed today? Where do you want to start? Well, I did take a trip down to San Antonio, Texas. My city. And uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how that went because I did go bike riding. Thanks. I contacted a few people, including yourself, about maybe some contacts in San Antonio or bike rides, and they connected me with a Facebook group called Pop-Up Social, where I posted that I would be in town for a few hours, and I appreciated if someone would do a bike ride with me, pop-up bike ride, Mm -hmm. and uh, Two girls, Yvette and Irma, took oh, time out. Okay. Took time out of their day to show me around the city on a bicycle, which was amazing. Nice. So where where did they take you? So they took me to a couple of different spots that I hadn't been before, which I think is great when you reach out to people in different cities. Mm-hmm. You know, you you might go to these spots. So we mm-hmm. went to Breckenridge Park. Oh, which love is, it near the zoo and amazing Keep going. Park. Let me uh, adjust this a little bit. And they took me to, I think it's called SX Art, where there's several murals on buildings, mm-hmm. amazing artwork that's out there. I had never been there before, and I've been to San Antonio several times. And they took me to a new spot called The Pearl, where there's mm. a bunch of people that were out drinking and sitting around just enjoying the day. So it was an amazing time and mad props to Irma and Yvette, the people out at Hub Market that gave me some stickers, Sweet. and Zeke who gave me a koozie from Cannibal uh, nice. Bike Group. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I, I, mean, I know most of the names that you said, especially Zeke. I think Zeke's dope guy, super dope guy. Probably one of, I, honestly, he's kind of like a mentor to me, like almost a father figure. Um, yeah, he's real cool, real cool people. Yeah, I did a interview with Irma and the vet, so you can oh, check awesome. that out on Ride Bikes More. You can check that one out as well, but I highly recommend that if you're going to go somewhere with your bicycle, you reach out to the community, mm-hmm. and there are people out there that will show you around the city. Yep, oh, well, for sure, for sure. Um, did you get to check out any of the, the other bike group while you were there? I did get invited to Wild Dogs, mm. uh, but I wasn't there in the evening, so I didn't get to ride with them or anything like that. I was just passing through while I was going yeah. camping, which is one of the other things you wanted to talk about, which was bike camping. Bike packing. Bike yeah. Packing. Yeah. So before we even go into bike camping uh, or bike packing, definitely check out Hub Market. Definitely check out Cannibal Bike Crew. Check out Wild Dogs. Pop up social. What's up, uh, Moses? Um, yeah, man. Like, there's a San Antonio is one of the best bike cities in Houston, in Texas by far. Like, I know Austin gets the love, and shout out to Austin too. But San Antonio, it's where like the I would consider San Antonio like the blue collar version of biking. Like Austin's kind of the white collar upper management type san antonio is like the blue collar it's like where it's great to just be be happy with being local be happy with just life i love it it it's kind of like the mm, i'm not even gonna say that i was gonna say like the new orleans of texas but then everybody would be like oh how could you compare it to new orleans? i got all this stuff <laughs> but um but yeah so going to bike pack man so do you have any trip plan for bike packing I don't, but I did do camping over the weekend. That's why I was passing through San Antonio, and I was riding the trails at the different campsites I was at. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, that's cool. Yeah, I definitely like to get at least six trips a year in for bikepacking. Um, I actually have one planned for later on this month. Bikepacking is amazing. I for people it. that are new to what we're doing, what is bikepacking? So, bikepacking, it's similar to camping, except you're getting rid of your motor vehicle, you're loading up that bike, and you're riding out. So you load up your bike with your tent, with everything you're gonna need, you ride to your campground, camp, and then you ride back. But yeah, it's the best way to do it. It's, for all of you, you already know, biking is the best way to travel, period. So it's the best way to do camping, by far. So where are you going on, on your trip? How far so is it? So I haven't narrowed it down yet. Um, I've narrowed it down to two places. One south, one's north. Um, I'm not going to give you your actuals because I, I don't know you guys yet. No but, stalkers uh, out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But well, one south, one's north. Both rides are about 40 miles out. And then we're going to camp for the night and then 40 miles back. So, and that's usually where I go. For me personally, you know, I'm fixed gear everything. So I have my, I actually have my bike here that I'm going to be taking on the trip. I might show you guys later. Might not, maybe. Um, cause I'm probably honestly going to post this video and not this one cause mine's is kind of dark. Um, but yeah, so we load up our bikes. I'm probably going to leave out about 6 30 AM so that we can get to our camp spot by hopefully one, like before the sun's really, really beaming and go enjoy the day, drum circle it up, all the good things. How do you handle the route and the weather? Well, the routes, the routes, the easy part. The routes, the easy part, because you know when we have numbers, like we can ride pretty much any road that is on freeway. Um, the weather is kind of tricky. It takes, it takes a a lot of planning, but b a lot of commitment. Like you have to be ready to ride in all conditions and prepare for them. Like you can't just say, well. It might be an extra two pounds, so I'm not gonna take my I'm not gonna take my rain gear this time or that kind of stuff because in, in Texas you never know, you really never know. Right, so you'd stop, put on your rain gear, and keep going. Exactly, keep it moving so that you can get to the campgrounds because it's much better to worry about sitting up camp in the rain versus trying to wait it out and then you sit somewhere for hours, your muscles get tight, and then by the time you're back on your bike, you don't want to ride anymore sense mm -hmm. nice yep so like I said like for for the people that know me if you want to come on this bike packing trip let me know soon because we will have cabins for some of you like me and a lot of my people aren't doing cabins we're probably gonna do tents but there will be cabins available for some if you let me know early and yeah we'll get it moving so you said about 40 miles out. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about distances. One of the other topics we wanted to cover was the MS-150. Oh, most definitely. We wanted to talk yeah. about uh, the, some stories and where it's at today. And for those of you that don't know what MS-150 is. Okay. So MS-150 is a ride to bring awareness to MS. Um, MS being I'm not the person to, well, I'll get to that part in a second. I'm not the person to really say like all of the logistics of the ride because I don't work for the ride. But for me personally, it was, when I first started doing MS, it was just a ride to test my limits, which someday we're gonna talk about later, which know your limits. Um, it was just a ride to test my limits. And I learned about like the awareness part like after that. So, multiple sclerosis. Yes, for multiple sclerosis. Okay. Um, it's a ride from, well, they have multiple throughout the year. That's another thing that we need to say because everybody thinks, at least in Houston, thinks that that's the only one like, throughout the year. Right, it's not the only one in Houston. There's several around the country. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. And but so today it was we're a, about the yeah, one in Houston. Yep, the one in Houston. And it was a ride from Houston to Austin. I heard they changed the route, but it was a ride from Houston to Austin two days over two days um the 
they had multiple distance points like for the first day and the second day was roughly about the same but so you're doing roughly about 150 miles in two days um most of day one flat most of day two hills because you're in you're entering hill country at that point now for me personally i love the organization of the ride i love that they have so many sag vans for the people that need sag um sag being vans to pick you up if you have a breakdown if you have breakdown physical or breakdown bike wise they have someone to pick you up to take you to the next spot or if need be the end point um i love that they have like so many food points and that kind of stuff it's a really really well organized ride now with all that being said now we can get to the stories because that that's the fun part well i, I did want to mention again it is very well organized i think the last time I, i've done it twice and there was a roughly uh, 14,000 riders out there. Mm -hmm. So they really have the logistics down. I believe every 10 to 13 miles, there's a stop yeah, where they have roughly. snacks and medics for you. It's an awesome experience. Typically, people will do it in a team. There is a fundraising component to it as well. Yeah. But I would highly recommend you get on the web and search for the MS-150 where you can get all of the details as to how mm -hmm. the ride works and whatnot. So yeah. from there, that's now, the story. Now, if you, well, <laughs> before that, since we were talking about that, um, before that part, um, so, yeah, there is a fundraising component, and if you guys have anybody that suffers from multiple sclerosis, um, it's definitely a good way to raise awareness, and also just a good all-around ride. Now, the story part, okay. So, I've done it four times now. One time road, three times fixed. For me personally, which I don't recommend anybody do it the way that I do it, it's a drinking ride for me. Like from from the first, I mean, I do stop and get my pickle juice and everything else, but for me personally, like it's a beer ride for me. Like from the first gas station on, I make sure I get my beer to carb load and keep it going from there now I had a bunch of friends that tried to do the same thing it didn't work out so well for them so that's that's what we're, we're gonna talk about like knowing your limits that was one of the first times I realized people you have to know your limits because I've had friends I'm not gonna mention any names on this particular podcast but I've had friends that try to do it and by 10 a.m. trying to do what I do they were getting sagged to all the way to the end point for dehydration. You have to know your limits. Um, do you have any interesting stories about MS before I go further? Because I feel like all of mine are like incriminating to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I do want to do is just have some recommendations. One, which is train, train, train. Get with the team, get with the group, get with someone who's done it before. Mm and train as much as you can but and while we're talking about that but at the same time you also have to understand that you have to train appropriately like yes get with the team see what their training is like because i've seen teams that they train for ms but they only do 40 miles in the morning that's not training for ms that's training for the first quarter of MS. If you're only going to do 40 miles in the morning when weather is ideal, then you're still not ready for when the sun is actually beaming, which you will be in. You're still not ready for inclement weather, which I was in day two, where the second half got rained out. Um, you're not ready for all of those things. If you're going to get with the team, get with the team that's actually going to train you. And then there's my rule of thumb. If you can do 20 miles straight, you can probably do a mess. Might be hard, but you can probably do it. The other recommendation that I would have is to find people that you have the same pace with. One of the things that made it really <laughs> fun for me was to have someone that was at my pace or I was at their pace and we got to talk and chat yeah. while we rode because 
it is a lot of miles that you're putting in. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when you're alone, you can get discouraged or get bored. So writing yep. with people that uh, write at your pace would be another recommendation that, that I would give. Yeah, and definitely, and definitely don't, since your recommendations, don't stop too often. Like, it is the worst thing ever. I know your legs hurt, you're tired, you want to stop, you want to have that extra Gatorade. Don't stop too often. Like you said, like, there's, there's roughly stops every 10 to 18 miles. I recommend stopping every other stop. Don't stop at every stop, number one. Number two, when you're there, get in, get out. Like, my recommendation is you do one or the other. Use the restroom or get, like, you know, fill up, get your snacks. Like, you want to get in and out because you don't want to give your muscles time to tighten up on you. And that's what happens a lot. Everybody stops too often and for too long. And then next thing you know, like, they're, like, cramping up on the ride. Yeah, I, I would stop at the medic tent and get the icy hot spray, mm -hmm. and I would yeah. spray, spray myself down with that stuff, and yep. grab some snacks, a couple of Gatorade drinks, and yep. yeah, and be, be, on, out. Be, be on my way. Exactly. So the, the one story that I have, the one interesting story I have is, while I was riding, um, they give you numbers for your shirt mm -hmm. and for your bicycle, so that they can identify you if something happens to you. and. Uh, you're supposed to wear your helmets and your gear. Well, one year I decided to take off my shirt because it was so hot out there. <laughs> and the other thing that I did was I bunched up my shorts really, really tight because yeah. they were bothering me. So they were really high. And in the position I was in when I was riding, mm -hmm. uh, people thought I was naked <laughs> <laughs> on the ride because my shorts were so bunched up and I didn't have my shirt on. Yeah. And there's, there's a picture I have somewhere of me riding and uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like I'm naked, but trust me, I am not naked on the ride. Yep. Just want to make that clear. Uh, we're gonna talk about the naked ride later. <laughs> I was gonna say, however, there's naked ride. No, but yeah, yeah so well, like one of mine, oh, so <laughs> interesting thing about one of mine. Um, so one year I decided to ride it and I didn't have my number and everything with me. So I got like all the weird looks like on the start out point because that's like my, all my stuff was with my SAG vehicle. So that's the thing too. Like for me personally, anytime I do a mess, I always have my own SAG vehicle. Like I have my own, like I, nothing against like the vans and everything. I love, I love that they have it for everybody else, but I like to have my own. Like that way, whenever I decide to pull off, I decide to pull off if I do, which I never do. But, so I had my own vehicle and they were going to meet me at the midpoint, but they had my bag with all my stuff. So because they woke up late. I was sitting there riding the whole first half like without a number. So I got like all the weird looks and everything and like guys coming up to me on the little motorcycle like, where's your number, where's your number? And I'm like, I don't know, it's at the midpoint. Um, so be prepared, be prepared, like have all your stuff with you. Um, if you're an MS crasher, shame on you. I hope that you do like actually donate to MS because don't get me wrong, I have crashed MS before too, but the thing is, when I crashed MS, I still gave a check to no, the MS Society. No excuses. No, 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 no. So here, so, okay, so here's the story with that one. Don't crash no, the MS. Don't. Yes, yes. Don't, 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 don't be me. Don't be me. Um, what, what's the I am not a role model commercial? Um, Charles Barkley. I mean, I am not a role model. Don't be me. Props but, to Charles. But here's the thing. Um, so one year, I decided I was like, all right. I don't know how much of this one raised it. That's in my conspiracy theory days, you know? I mean, well, I say days, I'm still a conspiracy theory guy. But, um, so I decided, you know what? I don't know how much of this money is gonna go to the actual charity, such, such, such. You want me to raise 400? Cool. I'm gonna give a $400 check to the MS Society. And I'm just gonna crash the ride. And so that's why I did like that one year. Um, Looking back now, I know like how much, and I know that money goes to the logistics and everything else too. Now that so now I'm cool with it, so I paid six cents. But yeah, so that's what I did that year. And while nobody typically bothered me, I was still bothered like the whole time because I felt like I was cheating. I wasn't cheating myself, and I, I don't even feel like I was cheating the ride. I felt like I was cheating like my fellow riders. 
because they actually put they actually put forth a little more commitment than I did. Like they actually put forth the commitment to like raising their money and like that kind of stuff. Like anybody can ride the miles. Anybody within their limits, like knowing your limits, can ride the ride. But are you willing to put forth that extra effort, like to the charity that you're you're trying to raise money for? So I felt like I was cheating them, and that's not a good feeling. So again, I'm not a role model. Don't do what I did that year. I can't remember I'm a role model. Could do what I did the other few years. Wait, how does no. <laughs> okay? Well, however that works, <laughs> um, you you get what I'm saying. Yeah, if you're gonna participate. I recommend you go 100% yeah. and enjoy the ride because it is an awesome experience. With that being said, we're now sponsored by MS150. Nope. Um, We'd like to be, but we're not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, not. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to. I would like to not be. I mean, sponsors shoot us, there shoot us the go. emails. However, <laughs> <laughs> there is a however all the time. I. Am particularly not looking to be sponsored by any ride because I want to keep this completely 100% genuine. I don't want to feel bound to say nice things about your ride. If your ride sucks, I'm gonna say it. So I'm gonna feel bad if you're paying me to say that your ride sucks. You know, they say opinions are like that piece, uh, that part of the body we all have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, we as people value that part of the body from other people from some people more than others <laughs> <laughs> so you know hey on to the next segment <laughs> we're gonna go into a bike rant about one knowing your limits and two complaining on other people's rides so uh, rant bam, warning. rant alert <laughs> rant all alert. right you know what really slips my gears boom <laughs> people complaining on freaking rides as as my man Steve-O says, shout out to our sponsor again, shout out Club Steve-O. Steve-O. Um, 100. As he says, this is a free service that you're getting. This is a free service. For you to come out to any ride and then complain about the distance of the ride, complain about the speed, complain about... Here's the thing. Ride leaders are not obligated to tell you the ride. Ride leaders are not obligated to tell you really anything besides come out and have a good time with a positive attitude. Once you start complaining, you already failed your part. They're doing their part by leading and keeping you safe. You failed your part by having a positive attitude. If you don't like the ride, you're more than welcome to go home. At any time, like you're more than welcome to go home. Phone a friend, find a buddy, call an Uber. All the all of those options are there for you. You don't call an like, Uber, go home. bro. You app an uber yeah, well <laughs> call yeah. a taxi we'll find call a taxi <laughs> app a uber i mean you know you use that, that, that thing use yeah. that thing in your pocket yeah, yeah, yeah. find your way home get out of there <laughs> yeah like, like you don't have to be there like there's no reason to complain about it and ruin everybody else's time don't like, do it yeah just come you're gonna be standing by yourself the next time you show up to a ride and trust me i've seen it before <laughs> people yeah. that complain Look, if anything, help out on a ride. Yeah. If you think if you think the ride is being too fast, maybe maybe go to Lisa, hey, is the ride gonna stay this fast? Okay, well then I probably can't make it. Okay, cool. Nobody fault you for it. Fall off. If it's a no drop ride. If it's a no drop ride, then somebody will be back there with you. The way maybe. we see things is there's always a positive side to whatever you wanna say. So keep it positive. Facts. If you can't find the positive, then they probably don't want you on the ride. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I won't say they don't want you on the ride. I'll say I don't want you on the ride. I can't <laughs> I speak for them. Yeah. I can't speak for them. This is true. But me as a rider, I don't want to hear that shit. Like you can, you can, you can totally leave. It's totally fine. Yeah, we got guys, girls that are new that come out and will start to complain, start to alpha roll the ride want to take over the ride mm-hmm. and you know you're going to get shunned by the biking community it's a fact i've, oh, seen, like, again, I, I've seen it happen before uh, yep. don't bring your toxic personality to the ride yep yep keep it light keep it light have a good time yeah like and the same thing goes for like the bravado that, that's something else that suits my gears like the bravado like bro we're riding bikes why are you so serious 
why are you so mad at everybody? Like, we're riding bikes. This this is for my bros. Like, we're riding bikes right now. Yo, love. Like, chill, like, chill out on the bravado. Like, take it down a notch. Like, we're supposed to be having fun out here. Yes. Yep. And and stop, like, um, what's it called? What's it called? Scheming on the girls. Like, you know how guys do. Hitting on the girls. I mean. Scheming. Yeah, you know, like, perving out on, like, the girls. Like, Stop being uh-huh. thirsty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, stop being thirsty. If you're thirsty, like, well, there'll be a midpoint. You can go grab a beer. Yes. Like, it's, it's not worth it, bro. Just yeah. have a good time. Just so you know, there's typically more guys than girls on most rides. So, if you're looking for that, rides are probably not the place for you. <laughs> facts. Big facts. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, so th- I think that's it for Slip My Gears. Like, that's my only rant for today. So, y'all getting off light. That's well, my we're, only we're, rant this week. We're also going to rant about knowing your limits. Yeah, well, I, I won't say that's a rant, though. That's more informative. Like, recommendations. Yeah, no, know, know your guy. Know your limits, bro. Like, know your riding capacity and capabilities. Facts. Because the thing is, there's nothing worse than all oh, the guys that come out. Like, they just bought an a $8,000 bike, and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to go fast. I'm an A-grouper, and such. And it's like, no, you're not. You're still a COVID rider. Like, it's like, know your limits. Like, just because someone else is doing something doesn't mean that you have to do it, too. Right. I always tell people when I'm leading a ride or I'm leading people, listen, whatever I do, you don't have to do. If you need to stop, mm-hmm. you stop. You ride to your limits and not to mine. Because there's things that I do that are out of bounds, and uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't recommend for people to do some of the things that I do. But again, I've been riding for years and years and years. And and even going back to what the previous topic was, not not just knowing your limits, but also know the ride's limits. We talked about like not doing what we do. There are a bunch of things that I do when I come out on social ride that you are not supposed to do like follow you follow what the riot leader says it's their ride don't follow me like i'm out doing me and i'm probably not even gonna be there the whole time so when he gets mad or when she gets mad at, at somebody we're gonna think they're not gonna be mad at me because i just i just came and pop in Gone. i can pop in and say what's up and then i'm out <laughs> so when they're telling you all to stay to the right stay to the right and then you see me like zoom by enough so you're like oh well i'm gonna go do it too no like, you stay to the right with the rest of the group. Because I'm probably leaving at that point. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, know your limits. Know the ride's limits. Yeah, don't go out there and try to ride 10, 20, 30, 40 miles and you haven't been out there in years and years mm-hmm. and years. Just don't do it. Don't go out there and try to drink, drink, drink and think you're going to be able to ride. Just yep. don't do it. Yep, exactly. Like, you see us pounding shots and then so you want to do it too. Like, honestly, don't have, you shouldn't be drinking and riding. To be honest, like, the, I was trying to spare a lot of you. I still will spare names, but come on. I see it, bro. I see it. Stop it. Like, y'all are, you're wilding out. A lot of you need to be out there practicing on your own or with just a few friends. Yep. Before you even get to your first ride, to be quite honest. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Um, I mean, I get it. You want to ride in a social ride, that's good. But again, like, know your limits. Like, you, a lot of y'all are, you're wilding out, and you're kind of, I didn't want to say it, but y'all are kind of annoying. Like, this is not something that you do while riding. Now, I'll This causes admit, accidents. I, I do that quite a bit uh, without using my hands. I'm not riding, you know, I'm riding with no hands, and I, I am on my phone texting on the uh, Instagram yeah. account. But at least when you do it, like you pull off to the side, like like we usually do, like pull off to the side. Like I see a lot of y'all, you're in the middle of a ride. Like there's people on both sides and you're like. Basically, people don't want to see you doing that. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to see you swerving in and out. They don't want to see you drinking excessively. It's unsafe. Yeah, don't put your other riders at risk. You want to put yourself at risk, that's fine. I'm never going to tell you not to because I'm not a role model. But don't put your other don't put your other cyclists at risk. Right. You might not care, but if you're in a group ride, 
you need to consider the people around you. Okay, wait, wait, let me see. Who is this? Um, I can't see that name. However, oh, but they, they agree with what I said. See? See what I'm saying? Nice. Yeah. Now, I think this is the perfect time for a giveaway. So we, oh, we're going to give away one of these shirts right now. So if you get this screenshot, we're going to post for five seconds. Okay. One of you that screenshots that to me will get one of these shirts. Nice. All right. So what's going to be the next topic for today? Well, first off, what ride are you doing tonight? I don't know. Are you going to do Tuesday Social? Let me tell you about the ride I did last night. About that. Okay. Wait, Monday? <laughs> so who was it? Which ride was it? So there was uh, two rides that uh, came out of Market Square Park. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. But, mm -hmm. uh, Gio was, was one of them. Yeah. And the other one, I don't know if it has a, a name, but uh, I think his name is the show guy. Oh, 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 okay. Romeo. Romeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Goon Ride. Uh, Goon <laughs> Afternoon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Goon Afternoon. Yeah. And, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> so that's was, what you did? Yeah, yeah, I nice. did I did part of it. Okay. Um, you know, we got some guys that are hot dogging, doing the yeah. wheelies and the swerving in Shout the out mouth. to Romeo. Yes, yeah. shout out to my man. And uh, I stayed to the right and tried to stay either really, <laughs> really in front or really, really in back because mm -hmm. I didn't want those guys to run into me. I'll admit there was times when I was nervous uh, that they would hit me when they were doing their wheelies. So. Once I stayed really up front or really in the back, I felt a lot better about it. Yeah. And I'm not gonna talk about how the ride ended for me because uh, it involves the boys in blue, but- uh, Nice, oh well no, then you gotta talk about that. Like, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> you gotta talk about that. So we're probably about um, 15 miles out of Houston at this point. Okay. Right, and um, I knew that eventually we were going to attract the wrong kind of attention with these guys doing the wheelies in yeah. front of cars. And Thanks. sure enough, we get lit up. And uh, mm. at that point, I'm like, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And I break <laughs> off. <laughs> you hey. know, my bad to my bad, but I was not about to chop no, it up no, with no, the you... boys in blue. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> and uh, I had to make my, my own route. So just like you said earlier, sometimes you're going to see... A guy doing his own thing. Facts. At that point, I was gone like Juan. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, like last night, I did I did the Street Riders Monday Night Ride. Um, shout out to Street Riders. Shout out to Cody. Um, yeah, I did their ride. It was cool. Like good, good like up tempo pace. I think riding speed was like seventeen or so, something like that. So like a nice little up tempo pace. Like not That's like super fast. fast, but you know enough to get the blood moving. Yeah. So we did that, and I like their rides, especially their fast rides, because a little bit faster rides come out. But I like their rides because at the end of every ride, they have a little sprint, like okay. at the end. Nice. So it's like you all pull up to stoplight. All right, cool. For those that want to sprint, sprint. For those that want to chill, chill, whatever. But you know, from here to the end point, is sprint. Boom. So you know, we do the ride. Probably about twenty-two miles or so was the ride, and then the last point was the sprint. Um, like always, for me, I always start every sprint like, nah, I'm chilling. I'm not really worried about it. Like, it's just a sprint. Like, I don't care. And I don't really, it's street stuff. Like, I don't really work like that on the street anymore. I'm old and washed. I'm like, I let the young guys have it. But when the sprint happened, and I saw my little bro, Mari, like out there in the front, and I saw some of the other guys, I'm like, eh, you know what? Let me go ahead and get it. <laughs> so, Go ahead and pass up a few people, yada yada yada. Um, so then it's just down to the five, which is always the same five, like me, Amari, Beaumont, um, one of the other guys, and who? Oh, and Izzy. And I'm like, okay, boom. So we're like going, we're on the sprint, and like, so the way after we left everybody else, you know, everybody kind of relaxed a little bit. So we're like relaxing <laughs> and whatever. Who knows? Like they're not catching up, so. Then I'm watching, and Amari and Beaumont's like doing like they're playing like cat and mouse, you know, road bike fix gear thing, like so they're playing cat and mouse. And I'm like, mm, I'll wait. 
let me see what happens here. And then, sure enough, they forgot about, just like we forgot about them, they forgot about, like, third and fourth place, like me and the other. <laughs> and, and, like, they're, they're tired off playing Cat and Mouse. I'm like, oh, my turn. And so, yes, yours truly, first place. Nice. As always. Nice. As advertised, that's where the double A name came from. For those of y'all that were wondering why I used to call myself double A, double A as advertised, first place as always, the king until I ain't the king no more. Bam. And I think that's a real good wrap up point for us, which is go out there and have a good time. Facts. Make friends, and sometimes you're going to be able to do sprints like that, which I think is awesome mm -hmm. to push yourself push the other riders around you. Yep. And also, remember, if it comes to street riders ride, the king and Selene, the king no more. Me. Be good to God. <laughs> say hi. Say what's up. Yep. But before we leave out, um, shout out to Zeke and the Cannibals. Shout out to the Wall Dogs. Shout out to Goldie and Street Riders. Shout out to Romeo. Um, what was the other Monday ride? I mean, that you were going to go to. Not, not, not about with Gio. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Gio. You know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> tonight's ride, I'm probably going to go to Tuesday Night Social, hosted by David. So, shout out to him. Most importantly, shout out to this week's sponsor. Steve Let us know in the comments if you want us to keep this location. Um, we're thinking about going back to the building, we might keep this location. We have a beautiful downtown view. We have... Lots of other things that we'll show you as the pod goes on. Um, let's look on Kicks location, but shout out to Steve-O, Club Steve-O. You don't know where to go, call Steve-O. And we want to roast your bike, so send us oh, a picture yes. of you and your bike. Yes, that's going to be the new segment, <laughs> um, <laughs> Roast Your Bike. So, yes, send us, send it either to Bikes and More. Ride Bikes More. Or Ride Bikes More. Um, send it to, don't send it to me, because <laughs> I, don't, I don't read DMs. Um, there will be a, a Bikes, uh, Bikes, Beers, and Bros page coming up soon. You can send it there. I think right after we film this, I'm going to film a little segment where we roast one of my bikes. It'll probably be... What's that? Anyway, it'll probably be my bikepacking bike, since I have that one with me. So you guys get to see that. We'll post it up on his page. And you guys can roast it too. But keep in mind... Same energy because when when I bring yours, <laughs> I'm gonna keep that same energy when I roast yours. We're gonna go 100. Thanks. No, we're not going 100. <laughs> like like 135. <laughs> Just a little bit beyond. A little bit beyond. Oh where you are. man. All right. So I think we're gonna end out there. See you guys next week. We'll either be at Club Sleepo again, or we'll be somewhere else. Never know. Might show up at a ride near you. Oh, let us know. Let us know your rides. We talked about the rides we used to go to. Let us know your rides. We're going to come check y'all out. For sure. But if your ride's trash, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I mean, I'm letting you know. I'm, I'm letting you know now. I'm going to say it. If your ride is trash, I'm, I'm going I'm to say it. <laughs> like, so don't invite us to, like, crappy rides. I mean, if, if it's a fun ride and you think it's fun, cool, let us know. I'll let you know what I'm into. Not that long of, of midpoints. Um, drinks are nice. Um, if your ride has an actual activity or a point to it, I'm really into it. Let us know. Either way, we'll check it out. But if it's trash, I'm going to let you know. For Bikes, Beers, and Bros, I'm Luke Kites. And be fixed to God. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.